bowl. Kiss the milk in the bowl. Whatever you want to know, come join the milk and in for show. Kiss the milk in the bowl. Kiss the milk in the bowl. Whatever you want to know, come join the milk and in for show. Kiss the milk in the bowl. We got the milk in the bowl. Whatever you want to know, come join the milk and in for show. It's the info man. You can call him information. Info man. Keep your knowledge all over this nation. Win, lose, or draw. You can bring your hate team, but if you want to win, please don't bring your debate team. We talk to Japanese Shogun, Aztec, Old Mexican, African, Dogun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Information Man. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for being here. Those of you that are coming into the chat room, thank you for being here as well. I see we got Gigi in there. We got No Bully Zone. Thank you for being here, No Bully Zone. And uh, we have a young man who I believe is uh, dynamic. I believe he is the, he is the future, he is the now. He is motivational. He is an inspirational. He is an encourager. He is dynamic. This young man is powerful. And I want you to hear uh, a few things from the young man himself, the things that he speaks upon. Uh, very powerful young man. Give me uh, one minute here as I'm realizing... There. There. I just realized that my um, my podcasting system needs to be uh, needs to be fixed here. There we go. There we go. Now it's working. I'm sorry about that. Everybody out there in speaker.com right now, um, in the beginning of the show, there was some dead sound, but I got my system working now back up. So I apologize for that. Uh, for those of you that are listening and Spreaker, thank you for being here. We have, like I said, we have a young man by the name of Brother Matthew Sanchez. He is a motivational speaker, a young brother. It lets me know that um, our youth are our future. Our youth are our now. Uh, we cannot set up here on YouTube or any social media saying that that our youth are a lost cause or that the black community is a lost cause. We have we have gems in our black community. This is the reason why, um, and this motivates me to know that being a part of my, my organization, where we're able to mentor youth, we're able to get youth into college, scholarship programs, we're able to motivate youth, that even in the dire stress that we think that we're in in this society today, that we can motivate, we can change our narratives, and that we have youth within our community. I don't care if they come from poor community, middle class communities, middle class communities. We have black youth who are doing fantastic things like Brother Matthew Sanchez. So let me give you all a little taste of what this brother uh, sounds like, what this brother is about, uh, because uh, I'm very impressed by him. And, um, let me let you hear a little bit of uh, what this young brother talks about real quick, if you don't mind. So let me see. Let's see here. Uh, and here we go, folks. Check this out. This, this young brother is dynamic. You know, it takes more pain. It takes more pain trying to hold on to someone who's not ordained to be with you. You are destroying yourself and your spirit as well. And you won't get nowhere trying to hold on to somebody who's not ordained to be with you. And if somebody who, who, who is ordained to be with you, they'll be happy for you. Those are the ones you need around your life. Not the ones who just don't care. You know, and Steve Harvey's book, like I said, says, think like I said, he talks about this wagon. And on that wagon, there's going to be two type, some type of people. Ones who are going to help you push it, and ones who are just going to sit there and watch you push it. So which, what, which one's on your wagon? What kind of people you have on your wagon? Huh? <laughs> what kind of people you got on your wagon? You got ones who just sit there and watch you work? Or do you have ones that actually help you get out the wagon and help you push the wagon up the hill? Mm -hmm. 
And don't worry about don't worry about what they'll be like if you if, if you say you want to leave them. Just let them go. If someone wants to walk out your life, let them walk out. Let them walk out your life. Let them walk out your life. They really they weren't supposed to be with you in the first place. If it's so easy for somebody to walk out of your life, they weren't supposed to be with you in the first place. If it's just that easy for them to walk out of your life and no hesitation, they weren't supposed to be with you in the first place. So leave them alone. Because what you're doing is you're wasting your time. You see, you have a purpose on this earth. And if you're spending so much energy trying to run behind somebody, then what are you doing with your what are you doing with your purpose in life? What are you doing with the with the what you're calling in life? Nothing. You are sitting around doing nothing, trying to run about somebody who ain't supposed to be with you. Come on now. Wasting time. You're wasting precious time. Precious time. And don't, and like I said before, don't worry about how they will feel. Because for every rejection, there is a blessing. Oh my God. For every rejection, there is a blessing. So don't worry about what they feel like. Just keep it moving. Send on a postcard and keep it moving. I mean, we as people spend precious time trying to hold on to somebody who's not supposed to be in our line. And let me tell you why they don't want to be in your life. One reason, because they can't handle your spirit, meaning that they, you are, you're, you're where they want to be, but they don't want to get there yet because they're scared. Secondly, they don't understand you. And the third one, oh, this happens, this is very common, that you outshine them. See, when you outshine somebody, they don't want to be around because they want to be where you are. You get what I'm saying? And for my relationship people, What's wrong with being single? You know, people ask me, people ask me all the time, why are you so single? As, as, as if singleness is a problem. I'd rather be single than be in a relationship I'm not meant to be in and get married and then have a baby and then create the cycle again. Come on now, come on now. I would rather be single than be in a relationship I'm not meant to be in, right? I, now let me say this, I would rather be single and learn more about myself than be, a, than be in a relationship that I'm not meant to be in. Some of you have that problem. Some of you get into relationships and don't, don't even know how to be single. Don't, they didn't even learn how to be single. Then you get into a relationship and wonder why it's not working. Maybe because you don't know how to be single. You, see, you can't love him because you don't love yourself. You can't love her because you don't love yourself. Come on, man. But all I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. Again. Yeah. And now the people who are not for you, welcome the people who are for you, right? Figure out who's in your wagon, not helping you, and get rid of them. And then find someone, or you may already have someone, who can help you push your wagon to success so you can get closer to your promise, right? And for my relationship people, learn how to be single and love yourself and get closer to God. So that when you get into a relationship, you don't have to worry about nothing. There's a great video about singleness, uh, Pastor Michael Todd. I'm gonna send the link down below. So there you have it. That's a uh, young brother, brother Sanchez, a uh, wonderful young brother who uh, right there you heard the sounds from this brother speaking his truth, uh, motivational in his speech. The brother really has a good grasp of, uh, of of way he sees life. And I think this is important because we often on YouTube, on panels, often talking about how we're going to transform the black community, how we're going to change things. It starts with our young people. So with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce, I had a little bit of a boo-boo there, folks, but it's okay with the thunder sound. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Brother Matthews. Brother Matthew Sanchez is uh, it's really good to have this young brother on. As I disengage from the thumbnail, let me say, let me give Brother Matthew Sanchez a clap here. <laughs> Uh, 
How you doing, brother? How are you doing? I'm glad to have you here. Um, I want to say peace to everybody in the chat room. Let me take a look here and see who we have in the chat room. We got my man. Uh, but oh, we got Baba. We got the elder. Elder Rashawn is in the house. Thank you for being here. GG Giggles. We got the reigning woman. We got Anthony Walls. Uh, we got seven seven. Thank you for being here. I've got my Google Hangout, um, which keeps popping up. That's why you're hearing that sound. Uh -huh. uh, when, uh -huh. when you go into a lot of different streams with people, you'll get these uh, reoccurrences because uh, you'll have people locked into your system. And as they're going on other people's streams, it'll pop up because you have them all locked into the system with you. So it can be annoying at times when you're trying to do what we're doing right now and trying to get to some uh, real conversation, real motivational conversation, encouragement. Let me uh, let me see who else is in there. Thank you for being here. Uh, we got T. Kelly. We got Poetic Kells. We've got, uh, 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 let's see, A.V. Nose Jr. We got Little Rock 2517. Thank you for being here. No, uh, no bullying zone again is here. And we'll have other folks come in as the, as the uh, program comes on. I know it's uh, early or early afternoon for some folks across the country on a Tuesday, on a Monday. Some folks are at work. Some folks are not. Uh, but um, Brother Sanchez, Brother Sanchez, Brother Sanchez, Brother, I want to thank you for reaching out to me and uh, connecting with me. And, uh, and I feel very honored to have you uh, here with me today on this program. Uh, because um, I feel like after looking at some of your content, listening to where you speak, I played a, a sound bite of you, a sound bite of you speaking there a few minutes ago. I feel like, brother, that you are you are the now, you are the future, and I feel that our future is in good hands when we have young brothers like you who are thinking on a much higher level, a bigger picture. Um, thank you, thank you. Can you let's go right ahead? Let's go right into it, brother. Um, introduce everybody, introduce yourself to everybody listening. Let them know so, who you so, are. So, my name is so my Matt, name is Matt Chance, Chance, and I and am I a young, young person, person trying to change the world. And I'm, I'm trying to change the world. And there's a quote by Steve Jobs that I hold damn close to my heart, and it says that. Those people who say they're going to change the world are normally the ones who do. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. No matter what, what negative people throw at me, no matter what um, uh, the, the negative comments or anything that throws at me, I'm still going to be obedient to the call and I'm going to do exactly what I'm made to do. And that's to inspire people. And I, I also like telling stories. So I use other people's uh, life story to inspire other people. I just did a video with... Um, Three young African American black women who who um who have strong opinions. Young adults have opinions too, and um that's my calling, and I'm sticking to it. And that's exactly what I do. I'm a young person on a mission. Let's say that. Um, can you can you break down or let people know what it, what is your philosophy? Now you say you want to change the world. You want to make a difference. That young people have a voice, and we want to and you want to be heard. Uh, what is that philosophy um, in terms of how do you think you can reshape the world or young people can reshape the world? For, for that? Well, I'm going to say this. How do I think young people can shape, can change the world or shape the world? I think that young people can shape the world by opening their, excuse me, opening their mouth, opening their mouth and speaking their opinions. Telling, uh, telling people what they think and what they believe and how they feel. Because believe it or not, when the older generation, no offense to the older generation here in this comment, and when the older generation leaves, it's up to us to run this country. So we have to be willing to first um, listen. Secondly, open your mouth. Don't be scared to speak. A lot of times you got a lot of young people who are very smart and very educated and speak because the pain had down for long to create conversation that um, opens people's minds up and, 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 and inspire people like what we're doing now. Hmm. 
what do you brother what motivates you like how old are you let everybody know how old you are right now well to be honest with you i may sound i may act a little bit older than what i am but i'm only 21 years old okay 21 years old so you're 21 years old what age can you recall in your 21 years where you first got this epiphany, this you first got this motivation, you what happened in your life? Because you're, I mean, 21 years old, you're very young, brother. Where is this coming from? What source? Well, well behind every great man is a great uh, woman. Now, you can take that in terms as in marriage terms or family terms. Mine is family terms. So I am a product of strong women in my life and strong men in my life that have taught me that life is, is a game, but you have to be willing to play the game. And they also taught me to never give up. The worst thing you can do in your life is to give up. And, no, and, 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 and sometimes when, you, when we fail, when we as people, when we fail at life, we feel like that, that is a, that's a call, like a curtain call. Don't do it again. But failure is success inside out. So my me, what, what, how I, how I became the person I am today is because I have failed in life, and because I have been hurt, and because I have been, um, been loved and nurtured for and cared for in the right way, uh, and because I, I've had, and you know what, I've always been different. No, and you, you asked me what age. There's no particular age. I've always been different. I've always been the, the. Um, the kind of guy, the type of young man that all the teachers love or the type of young man that all the teachers, you know, want to call son. I've always been that type of guy. That's just the spirit that, you know, God, if you guys are believers in God, I strongly believe in God, that God has placed on my heart. And um, it comes from a strong background of strong women, African-American women. And my, but my mom's African-American. She's Latino, but still, she's a woman. Um, so, it comes from that. It comes from a strong background. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Is your mother Afro-Latina? She's, mm, I'm not going to say she's Afro-Latina. Um, I just know that she's, is, she's like, she calls herself a Latina. So she's Latina girl. She's from Costa Rica. Okay. Now, and I know there's black people in Costa Rica. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, Af there's majority of the slaves during the Trangler slave trade that were brought to America, or well, majority of them were brought to this part of the world were brought in through South America. Mm -hmm. Only a small percentage of us were dropped off in what we call uh, America today. But I, I wanna emphasize this for everybody that's listening. You emphasize personally that you were raised by strong black women and strong black men. I must emphasize that because oftentimes um, a lot of the things that brothers are concerned about is that young black males are not being raised by black men and that- Now, black, let, me, now let, me, let me say this. Okay, go ahead. I did not have a father growing up. Did not have a father growing up. So when I say strong black man, I mean uncles, granddaddies, uh, grandfathers, and uh, role models in my life. Now, oh. as far as a father figure, mm -hmm. I had a father figure, but not my father in my life. But I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not going to shame my father because I love my father to death. Now I love him to death. Um, my father taught me how to be a man by not being in my life. So he did me a favor. Let me say that. So I, I just wanted to clear that up before, you know, that goes to another, you know, subject. Well, let, let me just say this, brother. What you just said is the story of my life too. My mm. father not being in my life as he should have actually mm -hmm. made me a stronger man. It actually made me a better man than he is. I'm a, I'm a better man than my own damn father is. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because when I was uh, with my mother, I worked. I did a lot of things in the household that a man would do. Matter of fact, I'm willing to make the argument that the only, the, the only man and the most best man that our mothers ever have in their lives are their sons. We're mm -hmm. the most consistent in their life when they're with men who lead them. Whatever problems that they have in their life with men, sons are always the most dependable men that 
uh, mothers will ever have in their life. But this is where I'm going to go with this. This is what's key. You mm -hmm. said that even though you did not have your biological father in your life, you still had your grandfather, you still had your uncles and other men to give you the male influence. Yes. I myself had the same situation. I had uh, uh, coaches that were black. I had various, uh, you know how it is in a black community. We have what we call uh, uh, extended family members, people who may not be blood related to you, but they're like your grandmother. They're like your uncle, right? They're guiding you. They're teaching you. They're motivating you. They're mentoring you. I've had a lot of great uh, black male mentors that were able to fill the void for where my father failed in my life. And this is important because especially on black YouTube, a lot of brothers speak about the importance of young black males having a black male figure in their life or figures mm -hmm. because a lot of times as black males, and I want to see how you feel about this, we tend to grow up in general. I'm not going to uh, uh, de demonize everyone, but in general, we tend to grow up in a matriotic system where women are in charge. And we get a lot of our influences from our mothers, our grandmothers, and sometimes we lack a balance. And that balance is having the masculine energy in our lives to balance out the, uh, the feminine energy that we've been raised under. Because in some cultures, um, people are used to growing up in a patriarchy, not a matriarch. So that's why what you said is very important. Because some people out there will say, see, 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 he's been raised by only women. So that's why he has this worship of only women. And I believe personally, uh, as you grow up as a young man, you do have to have a balance of the feminine energy with the masculine energy to complete and balance you. However, you can get that. What are your thoughts? Um, so if I, if I just may, what, what, what question are you asking me? So I said... Okay. So correctly okay do you think it's important for a young black male such as yourself to have the masculine energy in your life even when you're in a situation when you've been raised primarily by mostly women in your life yes um i do strongly believe that it is very highly important for all the mothers who are watching and for all the single fathers who are watching, even it's important to have a, a male, uh, female in your life too, but for the single mother, it is very important to have a male energy in that child's life, whether it's a daughter or a male, but mainly the males, okay? It's very important to have that kind of energy in their lives because, let me tell you why, what you don't want is to not have a young man, to not have a mentor in his life and him make mistakes because the jail system and the, the justice system is set up for young males specifically. It's set up for young men. So if they don't know, because let me say this, how can you be what you don't see? How can you be what you don't see? And if you don't show your son that there is a good young man that he can look after or mentor, then he don't know he can do it. So that's why it's important. You don't want to repeat the cycle that his father did. Okay, okay. Let me uh, let me just say this to you, brother. Um, I don't know if I ex um, made you aware of this, this but uh, I have uh, worked, I work in the prison system and I deal with, uh, I work in uh, mental health mm -hmm. and I deal with young black males, Latino males, just a variety of different males who have told me firsthand that one of their main problems is that they did not have a male role model in their life. Mm -hmm. they, they, the gang became their role model, the gang members became their family mm -hmm. and they feel that if they would have had the right uh, male structure in their life, they would have made better choices. They feel that they made bad choices, which is why they ended up in the prison industrial complex system. And so a lot of the young brothers that I deal with who have life sentences uh, or maybe they're getting out at, at 20, 30 years, they have a lot of regret. 
And they also have reflected on the fact that they really realized that they had a lack of proper male role model or male influence. See, not just having it, it's not a matter of having a male influence. It's a matter of having the right male influence in one's mm -hmm. life to guide you. So definitely, brother, definitely. Um, let me see. Uh, in that video that I played earlier, the audio, and you talked about relationships and how mm -hmm. you just got to go. You got to go your own way uh, mm -hmm. if you're not working out. On YouTube, a lot of brothers talk about this whole issue about relationships between black men and black women and black men are this. And you'll have black women that say that black men are this. And a lot of these conversations get into the negative areas of black males versus black females. Mm -hmm. But I heard here you are a 21 year old young man who's making more sense than some of us older folks that get on these platforms going back and forth with these issues. And you said very clearly, you just got to move on. You got to you can't hold you can't define your life by somebody else's standards. What are your thoughts as a 21 year old within your generation? Is is your generation having these issues as it relates to black female and male relations and relationships? Tell me what's going on, brother, from your perspective. Are you asking me, is are, are young people um, dealing with relationship problems more than older people? Yeah, I mean, do you believe that there is a battle between young blacks, a uh, young between black men and black women from your generational perspective? Because a lot of older folks like myself, uh, I'm a generation Xer, 49 years old. You'll often hear us talking about these sort of subject matters around uh, why we're not getting along with each other or that there's some kind of problem between black women and black men. But you are a whole other generation. Do you all have these problems? Do, do you think that there's really a problem between black men and black women going forward from your perspective? I, I do believe that young people do have a lot of relationship problems that will cause serious damage to them in the long run. But a lot of times the reason why older people don't understand is because maybe they have forgotten um, where they used to be. And that's a problem, you know? So I, I do believe that, I do strongly believe that young people are having relationship problems as bad as older people have. And that's only because they have seen it. And let, I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. You, you know the relationship, the kind of relationship you want by how you were raised. So if you take a relation, if you you take if you take a fatherless daughter who's never seen a good man in her life, that she's going to go get what she can get, right? She's never seen a good man, so how does she know which one to pick? She's she's just going to go get it. Same thing with um because females look for their father when they're looking for a a a male. They look and they look at a man as it, as their father, well, not as their father, but in like in the image of their father. So, I do believe it. Yes, I do believe that uh, young people do go through a lot. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the young people that you hang around with, that you motivate, that you talk to, how do they see them, themselves in this world today? Okay, because for, for example. You got reality TV shows. You've got all these messages about sexuality. Um, you have all these things that are, I think, poisoning the minds of our youth. And maybe I'm wrong. We have, uh, you have all the mass media. You got the Twitter. You got the, the the Snapchat, the Facebook. You got all these medias that causes people to have more relationship to machines and computers and to little apps than they are to actual people. When I was growing up, I grew up at a time when you had no cell phones. You had to actually learn to talk to people. You had to actually call someone on a phone. You had to actually write people a letter. You had to actually exhibit interpersonal skills. From your perspective, and around the areas that I talked about, what, do you, what is going on with the youth? Uh, where is the interpersonal connection there? Well, I, I, you're breaking up. I can't hear, hardly hear you. 
Let me see. I'm sorry that we're having some technical problems. What is the inner what is the interconnective uh, relationships that you that young people have today when there's so much distractions for young people, such as the uh, social media, you know, reality, uh, reality TV shows, uh, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, are people are, what, what's going on? Is, is, is there an interpersonal disconnect with the youth today? There is a disconnect with the youth. Um, I think that the, I think you asked me what was the what, what is the youth biggest problem? Why they feel like their pain doesn't matter is because we get shut down a lot. OK, we never, we, they, we're not allowed to have certain kind of spotlights that we deserve to get. Um, like this spotlight right here. A lot of young people won't even take the opportunity to do this because they feel like their opinion does not matter. Their mm -hmm. vote does not matter. Mm -hmm. And so it's it, it it's it's it, it it's it becomes it becomes distracting when you feel like you don't matter and you fall and you fall into other things, and it also becomes it becomes, I'm gonna say, I don't want to use the wrong word. It becomes like demeaning to your spirit. You, when you when you feel like you don't matter, you 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 don't do anything. You shut down. So that that's the problem. Okay, okay. So how? Let me ask you this other question too. Most of the young people within your age group, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, what have you. How are you perceived by your peers? Do they see you as weird, corny? Oh, man, you're not into rap or you're not into the hip stuff. How are you perceived? Are you perceived? Because a lot of times you hear older people like myself talk about how uh, educated black youth are not celebrated. But if you're into rapping and shaking your booty and talking with slang and you don't you present yourself in this sort of stereotypical urban ideology of what a black person is supposed to be, then you're seen as either not black, or not down, or you're corny. And I, I often feel like we don't celebrate the best of our youth as much as we will celebrate um, the nonsense. What are your thoughts about that? How are you perceived by your peer group? Well, I will say this. Um, I think my peer group, my the my generation, the ones who do know me, I think they respect me on a different level. And I have earned that respect from them. It's not something that um, I take lightly. Like, I don't take it for granted. And I have earned their, I think they respect me in a certain way as in they respect their parents. So... Um, I, I've never been picked on for it. Mm -hmm. I've never been picked on. And you know what? I, I know how, I know how to be a friend. I know how to motivate at the same time. So it's almost like they they can't, they, you cannot, I, I'm, I'm real too. So I, I, I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything because I'm, I'm real with it. And I think that's what people like. People like you when you're authentic and you're real. They like that about you. So it's not that I, and I'm, and I, I've been the type of person I've been, I've been um, scared to stand alone as well. So I haven't always been like this. It just grew on me. Um, but when people, when you're authentic and you're real, people automatically attract to you. So I've never had to go and buy my friends or buy this and that. They just automatically attract to me. And now I know, now I'm not scared to stand alone. So I, and I, that's how I think my peers receive me. They respect me, and they like that I'm real and I, I'm it's, I'm my true, authentic self. And I don't I don't need the name brand clothes to survive in this world. I don't need to smoke. And I they don't, they don't even they they don't even ask me that because they know the answer is going to be no. And they know even if they ask me that I want to join a part of a game or anything, I'm going to sit there and try my best to try to motivate them out of that situation. And some of them run away from it. So. Um, that's what I think. They respect me and they love my true authentic self, which causes them to attract to me. Let me ask you these questions because uh, you are the motivational. So this, ladies and gentlemen, this is um, Matthew Sanchez, young brother, 21 years old. He's about to uh, start college on Wednesday. Where are you going? Where are you going to be going to uh, school at, brother? 
So I attend uh, college at CVCC, Chattahoochee Valley Community College in Phoenix City, Alabama. And I am going to my general studies right now for the community college. And okay. I'm, uh, after that, I'm going, I hopefully, to God be the glory, I go to CSU, Columbus State University, and I get my um, degree in psychology. That's my plan. And let me ask you, brother, uh, what made you decide to go down the road of psychology? I actually work in psychology myself. I've been in it for almost 17 years now. I work as a rehab therapist. And as I was telling you, I've I have my background working with youth. I've worked with kids with emotional, physical disabilities. I've dealt with kids with autism. I've, I'm currently working with guys in the prison system. I've worked in geriatrics as well, nursing facilities, boarding care facilities. I've also done some work uh, with youth that are in uh, what you would call wheelchair sports, kids who have physical disability in, in sports, adaptive sports. I have a, and also have um, a degree in background as it relates to African history, black history. So, and I went to San Francisco State University. I, I've been taught in, by some of the best uh, folks, Nova Tashaka, Wave Nobles, um, yep. Professor McGee, who's passed away, God bless uh, his soul. Um, Professor Laura Hids, uh, I believe um, one year, Angela Davis uh, taught at our university for uh, about one year. So I've had, um, a lot of people don't know this about me. I've been around, and not to toot my own horn, but I've, I've been around some pretty well-known um, scholars because San Francisco State is the first university in this country to have an ethnic studies department and to introduce a black studies program, even before it got to black, uh, some of your historical black colleges. And it uh -huh. got, there, got there through protests uh, during the 60s, 70s, there was protests as usual, black people uh, demanding to have uh, uh, academics that speak to our point of view. So I went to a, a university in the city of San Francisco that was built by rebels. And uh, mm. when, I, when I was a youth, I was a I was into activism. I was a protester out there in my younger years in, in at the college level. I didn't stop there. And um, a lot of folks might have heard about this. There was a big controversy at San Francisco State where we had a mural that was put up uh, with Malcolm X. And the mural represented a lot of what Malcolm X was against, which was against Zionism. And then you had some Jew, you had some other groups on campus who did not like that. And they were trying to get us to take the mural down, the original brother who made the mural. And we were sleeping overnight trying to protect the mural. Uh, you had the campus police. I mean, it was a uh, talk about, uh, we're talking about we got tear gas, the whole nine yard. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, I've been through some shit that I haven't even begun to talk about on YouTube. But my question to you, brother, is what do you want to do? Because you're going to go to a university. And part of university is to share ideas, to have different ideas. And you're going to, in school, there may be things that you're going to protest. There are going to be things that you're going to stand up for in school. That's where it starts, that you're not going to agree with. Yeah. And my question is, what do you want to do with the profession in psychology? How do you want to use that? Well, now, I, if I told you, if I told you before that I want to do, if you asked me that I, if I want to do psychology, uh, a couple of years ago, I would I would have told you completely no. Um, but you you know there is I, I the reason why I want psychology because I I want to study more of the mind. I want to study why you know people feel the way they feel when they have self doubt. You know or why do why is the mind does certain things or you know how did how you know how powerful them. I, I want to study the mind. That's what I want to do. I want to study certain techniques and certain things like that and hopefully use that study of psychology and how your brain and your body works uh, and create something that will um, encourage young adults and older people as well. So I think that's what I want to do with it. I can't tell you, my, I don't have a plan lap from lap what I want to do with it, but I do know that I, I do know that I'm going to inspire people with it, and I just want to get more information about it. Now, you talk, there is a case that there's something I do not like. Okay. I will speak up and I will say something, but in the right manner, in the right mm -hmm. manner, and 
I, you know, there's a, a lot of, pro, you know, you know, the, you know, the protests I really respect that recently happened last year is that Florida incident with that shooting that kid who shot at the school in Florida. Yes. They, those young people took that so well and they took it with such um, grace. And, and uh, even though they were angry, they did not fight and argue. They voiced their opinions. And because of them, a lot more people have a, a lot more young people have voted because of them, and and I can only imagine what they're doing now. So that 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 is the crime. That is the kind of um, protest I would want to be a part of if I were to protest about something that I didn't like. Let me ask you a question. You you, you were explaining about why you want to go into psychology and about understanding what holds people back give us your opinion what do you believe what is your thoughts on what is what holds people back brother uh brother sanchez what holds us back i think i think fear holds us back i think a lot of fear and i'm still learning this myself being such a young person and doing having the calm that i have on my life I, I'm still learning that, you know, fear is just their direction. It's not the other. And that learning that, but I think what holds us back is fear and doubt and um, self um, love, I believe. Because if you really think about it, the 90% of people who start projects only do them, only, only do them because of either money and because they want their children to be you know, to be successful as well. But when fear comes to play, they give up. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be vulnerable with you right now. So I just, um, I just reached my school I took for my math test and uh, for the last semester in college and I did not pass, I failed. I failed and, um, and wanted to just give up. Now I'm on a full ride scholarship, mind you that. So my grades have to be on point. Yes. I got a full ride scholarship, so my grades had to be on point. But I was really hoping, because this is this will be my second time taking this math test. I was really hoping that I, I passed the test, but I failed. I just got news that I failed at it. And if I let, if I let that that one time failure determine my college career, then I will regret that for the rest of my life. And I'm so grateful that I know that now. That that failure is only there to point you in a different direction. Failure is success inside out. Les Brown, Les Brown says that if you fall at life, if you fall at life, try to land on your back. Because if you can land on your back, then you can look up. And if you can look up, then you can get up, right? That mm -hmm. is the key. That is the key. And over and I and I and I didn't I didn't know this before. Like I, I thought failure, you know, I was really, I was the procrastinator. So I still am, but I, I, I'm learning now. Um, I was, I, I just thought failure was just there to tell you, don't do this project. Don't do it. It's not for you. No, it's not telling you it's not for you. It's telling you to go a different direction, to go harder, to do it and do it different next time. It's not telling you to give up. And I don't even believe in, 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 in giving up. I believe that you make the decision yourself, not opportunities. You make the decision to give up. And I, I, you know, why would God, if you guys are believers like I am, why would God bring me this far and have me give up? You know, that doesn't make any sense for me. And if school does not work out for me, then I would have to find some other way to go to school. So let's say if I lose my scholarship. Yes. If I lose this full ride scholarship, I'm not going, I, I, will, I will allow myself to be sad. And that's okay. Allow yourself to be sad. But I'm going to get back up and try it again because my ancestors made this possible for me to do it because at one point, black people couldn't go to school, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. we, could, we, we yes. weren't allowed to have top-line degrees. They didn't even teach us how to read. So why would I give all that up for one failure? And that, that, that's what I think holds us back. Failure is the, the top line that holds young people back and older people back as well. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you this other question too, brother. 
uh, oftentimes you will hear um, older folks like myself, uh, Generation Xers, Baby Boomers, that will, will say, oh, the younger generation don't know what they're talking about. They don't know history. They got mm -hmm. a lot to learn, wet behind the ears. Uh, I got underwear older than you, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, what is your perspective on that? Um, are you humble? Because I, I remember when I was a youth that, yeah, there was, when I was a youth, I thought that I knew everything. But, uh, and then as I got older, I realized that older people really knew what the hell they were talking about. I thought they were dumb when I was young, but when I got older, I was like, damn, they were really intelligent. How humble are you to taking in information from older people, even when you feel like, young brother, that you already know it? How so, do you? So I feel like that, that has been built in my DNA because my mother is a nurse. My grandmother is a nurse. My aunts are a nurse, are nurses. And my grandmother, my mother has always taken care of people, elderly people. And my, um, you know, we've all, she always worked with people who have Alzheimer's. And I'm saying this to, to build up to what I'm saying, right? I feel like that the, the, the willingness to listen is building my DNA, mm -hmm. especially when it comes from older people I respect. Uh, and older people I hold dear close to my heart because my mother taught me that because she works with all types of people, even though you already know the answer, let them talk. Let them talk because there may be something that you, there may be that one thing that you may have missed that you did not know. And I, and I am I am who I am today because I, I, I have listened and understood for a, a while now. And I and and I can only imagine what my ability to be listening would would be later on in life. I think I think, and I also think the problem is you said that. Um, what do I say to older people who feel like that young people don't don't know what we're talking about? Keep saying that to your young person. Keep saying to your young person that you don't know what you're talking about, and watch them shut down. Mm -hmm. Watch them shut down in life. Watch them never accomplish anything. Sometimes they will. Sometimes that can be motivational for young people. But in other young people, if you tell a young person, you don't know what in the devil you are talking about and no one cares about what you're saying is that I don't care your opinion and I, I don't want you to speak. That's what you're saying. And that's a problem. Allow your young person to speak. Allow your, um, your young person to have opinions, but in the right way, in the right way. Um, so that's very important. It's, it's very important to to for your young person, that young person in your life to have an opinion about certain things. Now, I know what you're saying. Some, now, when I was raised, your opinion did not matter. But as I got older, then my opinion mattered, which made me feel like I was part of the group. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Part of the group. And um, yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like that um, if you keep telling young people that their opinion, that you don't know what you're talking about, then they won't know what they're talking about. Then they won't they won't go out and go get the information to to understand what you're talking about, because you you already told them their opinion doesn't matter. And when you don't, you know you know this, this is the key. Everybody, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, you we all want to feel valuable. We all want to feel valuable. And, and when you don't feel like you're valuable, then you do things that don't honor you. And when you do things that don't honor you, you mess up the plan that that was set for you. And that's the problem. Mm. Let me, uh, it's something I want to ask you that I'm intrigued about on your channel because uh, on one of your uh, topics. You talk about do not give up tips on how to never give up. Can you give us those tips for everyone listening? What are those tips, brother Matthew Sanchez? So the tip I would say to never give up is know from what I've learned. I'm only, I'm only speaking for what I've learned and what I have you know heard from other people. And because I'm still a living testimony myself. So um, the tips I believe that I've heard not to give up, the way not to give up is to know what you want 
and know that you may change your mind every now and then, and that's okay. Like, you know how they say when you go to college, you change your major at least five or six times. That's okay. You never know what 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 your plan is in life. Um, the next tip I would give, never to give up, is to have the ability to be vulnerable enough to say when you need help. Have the ability to, because see, that's the problem. Sometimes when we give up, we get to that we get to that highest point in our life when we need help, but we don't want to ask for it, or or we don't ask. If if you know that you need encouragement, talk to that person or go call a person. And say, I need some words right now. I need you to pray with me. I, or if you're a believer, I need you to um, uh, help me with this. Uh, give yourself the ability and be vulnerable, be vulnerable enough to ask for help. Vulnerability knocks down the walls of fear and, and, uh, and, and, um, and uh, self-doubt. Um, the next tip I would give of how not to give up is to soak in each and every information you can about people who have given up. Soak in each and every information that you can about people who have given up because believe it or not, we all are here for a reason and that everyone has a testimony mm -hmm. and you need to learn from them. So that's, that, those are my tips of how not to give up. Allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to ask for help. Um, soak in each and every information that you can about people who have given up and how they overcame it. Mm -hmm. And love yourself. Know and know what you want, and know that it's okay to change your mind every now and then. Let me. I'm going to ask you this. Uh, I'm going to say something to you, and I want to get your opinions on it. I want to get your thought. Got you. Oftentimes, and I hear a lot of brothers. Uh, there's a lot of motivational speakers that I tend to listen to from time to time. Oftentimes, there's a thought out there that says, "As a man." or as a person in general, we need to see the world for what the world really is and not what we want it to be. So oftentimes as a man, I might have this fantasy as to what I want the world to be or when it comes to dating, women, uh, family, relations, whatever it may be. I may have my view as to what I want things to be, but oftentimes we allow what we want things to be to blind us from seeing the world in situations for what they really are. What are your thoughts about that? What am I, are you asking me, what are my thoughts about um, people who should, say- Should we, let me, let me just ask in a different way. Should we see the world for what it really is or should we want to just see it from our own point of view? What are your thoughts on that? No, I think it's very important to see the world for what it is today. This world is not. This world is not. A, it's not a happy world like it should be. This world is not put together like it should be. And if you don't see the world for what it is, then you'll be in denial. Then you create something that doesn't work. You mm -hmm. know. Um, now having faith and having hope is a different thing. Okay. You can have hope that this world will be what you want it to be. You have you can have faith that it will change to where it is what you want it to be, but trying to deny that this world is not as evil as, as it is sometimes, yes, it, it, it don't you it's it's going to set you up for to be it's going to set you up to fall. Right? Okay, and mm -hmm. now and you, and you know what and, and it, this makes me think about the great Dr. Martin Luther King, and how he he knew this world was not in shape. So he did something about it. All the great leaders in the world, they knew this world was not in shape. Malcolm X, for example, uh, even though he had a different way of trying to change the world, oh, uh, Barack Obama, uh, um, Martin Luther King, these people, they knew that the world was not in, 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 in the correct order that it should be. So they did something about it. So if you really want to make change, don't deny that this world is not where it should be. That is a good question that you asked me. Okay, let me, you brought up uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, may he rest in peace. He is a member of my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, 06 to the brother. He's in the 
Omega chapter. He is a graduate of Morehouse, went to, got his, I think his master's degree at uh, Boston University, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the brother uh, is, um, I got to say, a lot of times I think Dr. King is misunderstood because some of us will sway with Malcolm X because maybe Malcolm X was portrayed as the more aggressive in terms of his ideology from Dr. King. But we know that Dr. King uh, late in his life was getting more frustrated and angry and getting tired of what was happening. Um, but this is one of the, I, I just want to preface this and say, one of the things that, that uh, Dr. King stated that I think gets lost in history, lost in the sauce, and not a lot of people re hear, I hear repeat this, is that Dr. King said two of the most dangerous things, two of the most dangerous things in the world, in the universe, or in this society, is someone who is, who is conscientiously stupid and someone that is sincerely ignorant. What are the what are the difference? A conscientiously stu stupid person, a, a stupidity, is someone that knows that something is wrong, but they will say that it's correct. So someone who knows that the sky is blue, but they'll say the sky is green, and they know it's not blue. They know that it's blue, or what we think, for example. But they will conscientiously tell lies. They will conscientiously mislead people, and then. Um, another another individual who is uh, uh, sincerely ignorant is someone who just doesn't know. So the true quote Dr. King said is two of the most dangerous things in American society is conscientious stupidity and sincere ignorance. If I'm saying that correct, what are you thought? What are your thoughts about those two things that I just said that actually come from a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? I think that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is right. I think that people who deny that, you know, like I said earlier, people who deny that this world is not where it should be are the ones who, I'm not going to say stupid, but I'm not, and I'm not going to say uh, anything negative. I, I will say this. Those are the people that um, never get anything done in this world. You know, um, the people who think that this world is not as evil as it is, those are the ones who never get anything done. And if you if you think about it, what drive what drove what drive Martin Luther King to do what he did? Well, like what's driving you or me to do what I'm doing now is because this world is the way it is now. And okay. if this world was all perfect, then we would I would not be wasting my time doing this. You know, if this world was if we had young adults who were doing what I'm doing, thousands about thousands of them. I would not be wasting my time doing this. Okay. But um, because I know that, you know, all, all my peers don't have it all together like I do, and I don't have it all together. I'm not perfect at all. But I, I at least I understand, you know, is the reason why I'm, I do what I do. So, and I will continue. And Well, I don't want to get into that tangent. I will continue to do it until, you know, I see change. Okay. And, and, and somebody asked me, where will you ever see change? I probably would say I don't have to see it. It's just something you have to feel because I get kids, you know, I got a, I had, you know, I get kids come to me, not all the time, but sometimes. I, so I graduated from William Hill Spencer High School in Columbus, Georgia. And that's okay. my model. And every time, every single time I go to that, that my back to my high school and I go to visit my godmother who changed my life completely, um, Shaniki Thornton, um, I get the uh, I get a, just an abundance amount of love, mm -hmm. and that's that's where the change comes. That's where the change comes in, because you know that you know that they they love you and they respect you and they they want to be like you, and that's a good thing. Okay, can you uh, let all the good people out there that's that's listening to this this video this broadcast live? Uh, what organizations are you a member of? Are you involved in any youth programs? Are you mentoring or tutoring or? What, what kind of programs or organizations are you involved with? Uh, I am a soldier in the Salvation Army. Okay. okay. I, I am a welcome, so welcome sergeant. It's just a, a person who gives people to the Salvation Army. 
uh, or to the church or whatever. So I um I also work at their camp at okay. Jasper, Georgia, in the, uh, close to Atlanta. And there is where I do my most mentoring because I, um, I'm the CIT. A CIT is a counselor in training, but I'm a CIT by choice, not by because they put me in that position, by okay. choice, because as a CIT, you get more ability to work with the boys. Now, we have boys and girls that come to our camp, but I'm in, I, I just, I'm just not in charge, but I oversee the boys. I, I feel like I do, you know. So okay. um, that's, that's where I do my most mentoring is at the camp every summer and I I would continue to do that as long as God has me to do it. Um and um yeah. So I'm a part of the Salvation Army. Um I mentor when needed. Like when if somebody calls me, I'm there. Um and I, I you know I, I don't think as a mentor as constantly seeing somebody. I think as a mentor who's just there to give their wisdom to when needed. So anytime someone needs me or like sees one of my videos, I feel like I'm mentoring them. So yeah, um there's not a handful of projects that I've uh, I've I also was I also was a, a co founder of No Bully Zone, an organization that um that that um targets bullying a, a while back. That was back in my younger days when I used to impersonate Michael Jackson. You get that? <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> So, um, um, yeah, I did a couple. Of, I did some things with that, and um, that was about it. Um, now, I've, I've I've attended some some urban league. Um, I've attended some of their functions and the NAACP functions, but I've never been a part of what they're doing. And my goal, my goal is to get a lot of um, fraternities hands on, um, um, and to do some work with them. That's my goal. So and, and and that's really why I I'm, I that's really one one of the reasons why I'm doing YouTube and the way I'm doing it because I want to yeah. catch somebody's eye so, so that they can pick me up that I can begin to do the work that I'm I'm meant to do. Well, brother, you you, so you also helps me out. The, you, you certainly have the charisma, the skill set to do any and everything that you want to do, and don't let anybody you. tell you that you can't. Let me. Let me take us in a different area area now. And I want you to do your best to give your opinions or your thoughts based on the posts of the youth that you interact with. And I know you did an interview with the three young ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go into an area about politics and what's happening in this society and what your opinions are as to what's taking place right now. But as we ease into that area, you did an interview with three young ladies who I definitely have to get on here with you. And mm -hmm. how did that all come together? Why did you do that? Uh, give me your, give, give us a breakdown of those young ladies and uh, what, the, what the conversation was about. Paint a picture to everybody out there listening. So the, the three young ladies' names are Michael Cunningham, J uh, Olivia Jones, Love Jones, and Joy Cunningham as well. So I teach Sunday school at my church, the Salvation Army. Um, and in Columbus, Georgia, um, and what what the topics that the 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 topics and the discussions that we have, and uh, I, I, let me say this: my my Sunday school is not no ordinary ordinary Sunday school. My my Sunday's class, you know, we touch on a lot of topics that some some pastors and some uh, uh, Christian leaders are scared to talk about. And that's, I believe that's very important for young people to talk about them. So that's how it came about. We really, I really, um, I know that Michael and Joy and um, Olivia were very opinionated. And that's what we need, a lot of opinionated young people. And we need some quiet, some quiet young people too to do some work behind the scenes. That's, that's okay, I accept that. But I know that they're very opinionated about certain topics in the, and um, that we were talking about. And I, and I simply just asked them, you know, some questions while I was filming them. And um, they agreed to it. So okay, that's brother, where it came from. This is what I'm going to do, brother. I'm going to give, I send a link in the chat room for folks to click into that, check that out at, 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 at whenever they like. But let me give people a taste, just a small taste of this interview on, on brother Matthew Sanchez. 
let me hit let me let me uh hit something real quick because folks i need y'all to go over to his his channel support him give him some love and uh show him some love by uh supporting his channel and uh this is very very important to listen up we everybody make sure you go over and support matthew sanchez support this young brother's channel this young brother is inspirational motivational encouraging loving he is the motivational speaker of the future mm. support this brother this brother will be doing great things and you want to be able to say we knew him when support his channel he is what we speak upon when we talk about supporting our youth matthew sanchez so confident yes confidence a lot of girls, all the way confidence their confidence is very low and they're always talk negative about their so definitely so. if you look in the mirror and you can't say that i'm beautiful there's a problem if you look in the mirror and say and point out every single thing that you hate about yourself, there's a problem. And that's something that you need to grow to love and fix. Definitely. If you can't love yourself, you can't love anyone else. Yes. Yes. You don't love it. Like yeah. write all positive words on your mirror. And then mm. when you wake up, even though you might not look flawless. That mirror ain't gonna crack. Up, that mirror right. is not gonna crack at all. Not because that your if face anything, is in the mirror is not gonna crack. Mm -hmm. You're not ugly. You sure not, girl. You are not. I go to the bathroom. <laughs> I look at myself. I walk out smiling. I really do. Y'all think I'm, I'm serious. So, I do that, too. I walk this. And then I, mean, I just walk out. <laughs> I believe. I don't think there's a thing of too much self-confidence. Like, I, if you, if I'm on my sense, I post nothing but myself. And people are like, why don't y'all, why don't y'all post, why don't you post your friends? Why don't you post your, this is not, like, I love my I don't really like using the face filters sometimes, like the nose ones and the ears. I don't really like using. I like to show my face. Because there's a lot of people. Who no, post post. Yeah, there's a lot of people who post themselves on Facebook. All you see is filter, filter, filter. And I'm talking about the dog filter, the bunny, but like you don't. Know I do that filter. little eye filter it's when fun. it makes me want to have different eye colors. Okay, those are cute. Okay, <laughs> those are cute. But. <laughs> Still love yourself. For me, my confidence, I think, really started coming when I started doing makeup. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I know what I was doing. I don't know. And anytime I start like a new project, try to learn something, most of the time I give up on it. But with makeup, I feel like I'm progressing and I want to progress because from it, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to cover anything. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make it stand out. I'm trying to make sure you see black. Like makeup, like I don't wear makeup every day. I ain't got time for it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm yes, mm -hmm. I don't got time for that. <laughs> like it's a lot, but like with makeup, I feel like I've grown confident. In I am. I am freaking cute, y'all. Okay. okay. <laughs> I am curious. <laughs> I just, I just needed something to help me get that out to make sure that I knew that because, like, I don't. There, there were days where I didn't like. I, I won't look in the mirror, y'all. Like. Y'all know how y'all got okay. Our mirror's too high anyway, but you know how like some people like they mirror, <laughs> they mirror now. Our mirror's like on the face up. It doesn't mm -hmm. have like whatever. And like I won't look at myself in the mirror like body wise. I was like, I ain't got time. It was like it was just creepy to me. Like I just wouldn't because yeah. I didn't. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I wanted to play a little bit of that for everybody out there listening. These are some uh, beautiful young ladies that Brother Matthew Sanchez interviewed, but you can hear their confidence. Sister's talking about um, sometimes they don't want to wear makeup. They just want to be themselves. They notice that on Snapchat, everyone puts filters on trying to be something other than what they really are in their authentic self. Uh, I'm going to go over to Brother Matthew Sanchez right now and let him continue where that interview went. But, Brother, I just wanted to play a little bit of that uh, from these beautiful sisters that you had on there. And um, 
what are your thoughts? I mean, you did the interview. You can give us a little bit more detail into where these sisters' mind is at, but go right ahead, brother. So the intention behind the interview were, was to uh, empower young African-American women, as, I mean, young, younger, younger generation than they are. You know, I had a comment, one of my closest friends, um, he, uh, he showed the video, that video, as, and I just uploaded another one of them. And it's called Younger, Younger Adults Pains of Matter too. Um, but he watched that video you just played and to his, he showed it to his niece. And one quote that she said to him that he loved is that now I know that I don't have to, to, to look beautiful to feel beautiful as a, as a black girl. And that captured everything, excuse me, that I was trying to do in the video. Now, the vid I just posted another one with those same three uh, young women, and we discussed all kinds of topics as far as parents. We discussed discrimination. We discussed um, uh, b b Donald Trump, our President Donald Trump. We discussed um, voting. So. You know, and, and, and I use them, I use those three young women because they are, we, they are our next generation. And now, and the reason why I, I, pick, I pick young women is because now in today's time, right now as we're speaking, women are taking over the world. They are taking over the world. And, and, and as bad as us men, some of us men, I don't mind, but as bad as us, some of us men don't like it, they are taking over the world. If you go back to when they had the last couple of elections, how many Cong Congress women uh, ran for Congress women? Over a hundred. And I'm talking about black women, uh, Muslim women, gay women, straight women, um, Asian women. So it, it, they're taking over the world, right? So and and I believe that that kind of content they need young young girls need to see. They need to see young women. Uh, I mean not I mean not young women, but older women than them. No, you know, and so that they're beautiful. They need to see that. They need to see because how can you be what you don't see? It all mm -hmm. goes back to that. How can you be what you don't see? If okay. you don't see it, then you can't be it. Well, let me let me throw a little monkey wrench in there to you, brother. Um, <laughs> monkey wrench. Or well, let me put, let me just let me let me just let me uh, be a. Uh, I don't say devil's advocate. Let me be an angel's advocate. Well, thank you. I um, need it. Let me just say this. There are some that would say within the black community, that is not the largest society, that young black women or women in general, they have uh, publications. They have things that are geared towards young women. You have Ebony. You have Essence magazine. You have uh, uh, shows on TV that are geared towards women more so than men. Mm -hmm. uh, we have men have sports uh you even had uh, obama when he was in office he tried to introduce a program that was geared towards uh it was called my brother's keepers yeah it was towards dealing with young black males and when that took place you had some pushback from women saying well what about the women and then i grew up at a time young uh, young brother when uh there was a thing called the boys club mm -hmm. and you had a girls club and you had the boy scouts and you had the girl scouts mm -hmm. and there are some that make arguments that every time young men or men have spaces that are designed for us that our spaces continue to be invaded by female energy because every time there's something for males in particular and i know this is controversy what i'm saying but i'm, I'm, I'm just i have to be fair here yeah uh, that time that men have something for men it somehow gets um uh you know infiltrated or it gets um changed around to accommodate uh female perspectives female energies and i personally believe that women need their personal spaces because a man can't teach a young lady how to be a woman and I don't believe that a woman can teach a young man how to be a man. A woman can do everything she can to guide you, to give you right from wrong. Mm -hmm. but you still need certain masculine energies in your life, however you can get them. So I think that it's a great thing that you're 
praising and you're giving the young ladies a platform to speak their mind. But what is your opinion when it comes to the fact that young black males, we need a platform to speak our minds. We need a place where we can just be amongst ourselves to work through our issues and our energies without it being, I don't want to say invaded, but without it being um, influenced by feed outside female energies. Mm-hmm. Because uh, at the end of the day, there is there are no publications that I know of that really focus and speak on black male issues. Mm-hmm. Within the black community, I'm not talking about the largest society. We know the largest society doesn't give a damn about our community. But, and this is not to say that it's not important to promote what women are doing and to build female self-esteem up. And you're right, women are taking over the society. They're moving into areas of influence in politics, business. Um, but at the end of the day, Let's not forget that although women are building or are taking over areas in this society, at the end of the day, historically, men have built society because men go out every day. We're, we're taught, we're told and conditioned that we have to go out and work, take care of our families, uh, bring home the bacon, be a man, provide protection, provide mm. love to the family. Mm. Uh, provide a we, we, there's so many things that we're conditioned that we're supposed to do as men. Yeah. So I know I said a whole bunch of things, but I need to know what is your opinion about male spaces mm. within the female energy that you speak of that's taken over the world. So let me, and, and let me clear this up for the viewers that are watching this. Um, the the reason why I did that interview is just just for young women, but my channel. It's not, it's not a, 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 a the, my channel does not revolve on young women specifically. Uh, my channel also revolves on my, the, the intention behind my channel is to simply inspire. Yes. That's all. And whether that's women or male, which, which will be both. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't, I don't only do women and I don't only do male. My thing is if, if, uh, cause I'm on, I'm on my channel too, as you guys saw in the beginning. For the view, the viewers, I'm on, I'm on my channel as well, um, and as over time, the more opportunities that don't, the more opportunities I do get, I will discuss topics as far as male topics. Um, so, what do I say to um, people who feel like that no one cares about the male community? This is what I would say. I would say that if you feel like no one cares about the male community, then why don't you do something? Why don't Ooh, you try- say it so, again? Say it again. If you feel like no one cares about the male community, then that means that it's up to you to do something. And you know what? Let me say this too. Be careful what you say to anybody because there's a quote. I'm talking to the viewers. There's a quote by Maya Angelo that says, People will always forget your name. They will always forget what you look like, but they will never forget how you make them feel. So this is my problem. A lot of times we as older people and young people, we spend so much of our time trying to point the finger at somebody else when it could be you that was is supposed to be doing something. It could mm-hmm. be you and you don't even know it. So if you feel like there, there's a problem with um, male attention not being addressed, then you need to address it. It, it, that that's that's a powerful statement because it's true, it's true. And if you feel like the female, um, just like let, I'm gonna bring up, I'm gonna bring up this R. Kelly thing. Just yes. Like, just like people um are, are, are were talking about this R. Kelly issue. Yes. Somebody addressed it. You see, what I'm saying somebody took action. You, they got tired of sitting back and letting it happen. They took action. Now I'm not saying that I believe, and and I and I'm not saying I agree or disagree. That's up to your opinion. I'm not going to speak my opinion because I'm not, not going to get into it. But what I'm saying is that if you feel like this work work needs to be done, then maybe you should start by doing. It. And this you can do the simplest thing. I mean, give your give your time. That's the that's the best thing you can do to a young person or to a a male figure. Is give your time. Okay, let's get into the area of uh, another area of action: politics. 
And I know you were talking to the young ladies about politics. What is your views on policy? Now, for, we had a conversation before we went on live. You know that I'm not a big fan of one Donald Trump or Donald Trump. <laughs> I often say Trump. You're Trump. breaking up. Man. Okay. Let me. Uh, can you hear me? Can you can you hear me better now? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Put a run in the chat room if you can hear me. Okay, you're not breaking up, but I got you. I can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. We talked earlier before we came on live, and I told you I'm not a big fan of Donald uh, Trump. All right, I, uh, Donald Trump or uh, Trump. I often say Trump. I'm not a big fan of him. Um, we know that politics is what it is, and I have an understanding that in politics there are no permanent friends, there are no permanent uh, enemies. There mm -hmm. is just permanent interest in politics. Mm -hmm. well, what are your thoughts about politics and what's going on? Do you think Trump is separating the country? Do you think he's dividing us on lines of race, uh, political views? or uh, 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 I mean, uh, What do you think is going on? What do young people think about what's happening in this world under politics? You know what? Um, I'm going to take your advice. I cannot, I cannot speak for mm -hmm. young people, right? Okay. That's for that's for young people to speak up on their own opinions, um, mm -hmm. because every every not you you would be amazed, but a lot of young people have different opinions about Trump. And so, what I will say this: this is what I will say about our President Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump. I will say that he is, whether we like it or not, he won. He won the race. And whether you think it's fair and square, it really does not matter because at the end of the day, you hold the card. We all hold the card to our own decisions. The, you can't determine, I feel like, this is what I feel like. You cannot determine, uh, 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 you can't, a man, any, can nobody tell you what to do? Can no one tell you what to do in this entire world? It's up to you with the decision you want to make. So I, I'm not going to say I dislike Trump or I like Trump. What I will say is that I have hope for him. Okay. Now you can disagree or you can agree with me on that, but that's my opinion. I have hope for Donald Trump that he will one day um, say, fix things. You know, he will say the right thing and he will fix the right things. Now, some people may say, well, you don't even know, you don't know nothing about and, and that's the problem. The fact that you think I don't know is a problem. The fact that you hold me to a lower pedestal as a young adult is a problem. Um, I, you know, you, you just have to, you, th this goes back to knowing who you are. When you know mm -hmm. who you are, you know what not to talk about and what to talk about. You know what to, te to take on and what to, to not take on, you know? And I, what, th I honestly think that what he is doing and everything that he has done as a president is speak. He, you know, he's showing us who he really is. He's showing us who he really is, and sometimes that can become saddening to see someone with so much power um, doing what he has done. So, I think that's okay. all I'm gonna say on that. Okay, let me ask you this question, and. Um... I know it's a topic that many people will say, oh, we just can't get away from these type of topics. Yeah. Okay. I view personally, as a as a young 21-year-old young man, and maybe if not you, maybe some of the other youth that you have dealt with and been around have experienced this. Have you experienced in this society, in this quote unquote diverse society, this colorblind society that they want us to believe that we're living in today? Have you experienced racism personally or prejudice towards yourself in, in since in your 21 years? Personally, you mean, have I have I experienced racism toward my own kind or just racism period? Racism period. Uh, for example, racism period, whether it be from whites, black. I don't. This is how I am. I'm going to just keep it real. I don't really think that black people. You can put a label that we're racist in the way you can label people of the white persuasion because racism, from what I've learned in all my years, is connected to power. 
and your ability to execute power over someone. Whereas prejudice is your pre your uh, perceived notion of someone. So if I say I don't like you because you've got a blue head on, I don't like people who have blue hats on, right? But do I have the power economically, institutionally, and socially to keep you out of education, jobs, institutions of higher learning, uh, out of uh, buying a home? To me, that's that's racism because racism equals power to execute your will over someone's life through institutional means. But, um, but, but, but whether you, and it doesn't matter if you have a different opinion than me, but have you, and I know, and in black people, one of our biggest problems is that we do unfortunately hate on one another. Sometimes have, and I hate to say it, a crab in a barrels mentality where we pull one another down sometimes. Don't like to see one another achieve higher things and move on in our life sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you deal with white people or other groups of people who have these stereotypes about who we are as a people. So, in your 21 years, Brother Matthew Sanchez, have you experienced direct racism or prejudice towards you and your and since you've been alive? You know, I cannot recall a time that um, I have experienced racism as far as in my face racism, but I can tell you this. I have been, um, one of my godmothers are Caucasian, right? And obviously I am not white. And oh. I have been, we have been certain places, me and my godmother who is Caucasian, one of my godmothers, uh, we have been some places together and we get all kinds of stare, right? Those stares, you know, those, you know, those kind of stares that, that you feel people are saying, why is that black boy with that white lady? You know what I'm saying? So we've have, I've, I've, I've never experienced it in my face. I've never said, I've never heard nobody call me an N word. I've never, I never experienced racism as far as, um, um, in my face, like I said, but I've had felt it in the room. I have felt the, the presence of racism around me. Um, so say for instance, I'll give you another topic. Um, if I'm wearing a hoodie, if I go to a grocery store and I'm wearing a hoodie or I'm wearing something that doesn't look presentable, of course you get those stares and of course you get those, those, um, those um, caution looks that what are you really, you know, what are you doing here? So no. I've never experienced racism up in my face, but I've had felt the presence of it before. Okay, let, let me let me make this statement. A lot of times older black folks such as myself and those that are older than me, sometimes we'll get on streams and we'll tell people, well, you haven't experienced racism, but one day you're going to get your Negro wake up call. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually, this is what Dr. King and many of our black leaders, our sheroes and our heroes were talking about years ago. They have been wanting to get us to a point where we would not have to experience racism directly. Yeah. And I would say that personally, I would like the day to come. And I don't think sometimes people say that they want it to come, but sometimes I question whether they want to because I really want the day to come when young black males like yourself and, and young ladies don't experience it. Uh, when I hear a young person say they have not, to me, that's a good thing. But however, if the, I do, the father in me, because I have an 11 year old daughter, and the older, per the older person who's lived a little bit of life in me says that I'm glad you have not, I but you may, you may, you may come across it because, brother, you're 21 years old. What means is that you still have a lot of years of life to live and wisdom to learn and gain. And you might, I don't want to say Negro wake up call, but you might experience it firsthand in your duration of your life. I don't want you to, but it is the reality of American society. I must be honest with you. What are your so thoughts? Asking me, you're asking me if I do experience it, what would I do? 
Yeah, how would you handle it? I mean, what what, what is your makeup? You're a very positive, brother. You seem very uh uh you seem very uh 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 mature. You're 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 mature and you 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 have a sense of yourself, you have a presence. Some would say you have an old soul. You ever heard that term before? Yes, I have oh, many times soul. before. So how would you deal with that, brother? If you were to face that reality, if Try I that. were if I were to face uh face um a racism against me in my face, in my actual environment, my face. I probably, I probably would, I probably would have to walk away. I would have to, I would have to walk away if it's if if it's if it's if it's correct to walk away. Now, if there's a big issue, see, and I'm not the type of person. I I I I might tell a person that is going to argue with you to make me right, you know, because there's no sense of arguing with somebody to make you right. That's just not that's not how I I, I run my life. Um, that's not I that's not what I I try not to do that. So if there if there is let me say if it does come a time where I experience racism and it gets really really tough for me to try to hold my tongue, then I will voice my opinion, right in the most correct mannerly way I can, and then I would have to walk away. Because I don't want someone to get that kind of power over me when I get out of character. Wait a minute, stop right there. Repeat that again. You don't need to win. Say it again. Two things you said that's powerful. You don't want to get out of character. You don't want someone to have a uh, emotional pull over you. And you don't need to win an argument to feel right about yourself. Repeat those. This is important. I need you to repeat those key statements because I'm going to be honest with you. I have to fight this myself, uh, young yes, brother. We all do. We all do. I get, I, I get on panels and you're probably going to experience this when you get on panels because I'm going to be bringing you on some of my panels that I'm going to be having. OK, you're going to get on panels and sometimes you're going to have disagreements with people. And people can say things to get under your skin. They might want to, they may see that you're having success and they want to see if they can get you off of, get you out of character. And there are going to be times when you're going to have to use restraint. There are going to be times when you may not be able to use restraint. And so I need to, to hear a 21 year old brother like yourself, I need to hear those key things again. Say it again. Say it again. I am not going to allow someone, I would, I will not, I would try not to allow someone to bring me out of character. It was one. Yes. Yes. And That's one. I would, I would not try to argue with someone to make me right. That's true. And I also, I will not try to demean anybody's spirit. Let's say that. That's three. I will try not to mean anybody's spirit. I will know. You will have to know. And it's going to be hard. And it, it probably will be hard for me to do when I do it. But I will. I, those three things I will try my best to do. It's try not to argue to make somebody right. Try. I will try not to um, let somebody get out of my, get me out of my character. And I will try to respect their opinion because that's another thing, too. When you don't feel like you are valuable, when you don't feel like your opinion matters, then the conversation goes left. OK, really now, bad. now I'm going to I'm going to tell I'm giving you a heads up right now. I'll be bringing you on the panels. You may have other people that will want to invite you to their panels. You're going to get people of a variety of ages. Some people are going to test you. They're going to hear what you just said on this channel with me today and say, OK, the young man says he can't be knocked off his square. If I ever get him on a panel, I'm going to knock him off. I'm going to get my hands on this Negro. I'm going to knock him off his square. There's, mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know right there. There's okay. something that's going to test your theory. They're going to they're going to test your fortitude. Oh, yes. I got to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. They don't. They, this is not this is not going to be. Nobody's going to be holding your hand on YouTube, brother. <laughs> they're going to test your fortitude. Believe me. And I and guess what, brother Sanchez? I think you're going to live up to the billing. Thank you. I can see the spirit into you now, uh, you. brother Matthew. With the sake of time, because I do have a few more questions to ask you, mm. how much more time do you have 
uh, for us, brother, before we let you go. I do have well, some other I, I can do I can do um, 30. I can do 30 more minutes. OK, OK. And I'm going to be these are going to be very simple questions. OK. Point. Um, and I'm going to use this by guiding myself through your your um, your 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 work here. This is the question. Now, you said earlier, how can you we talked about I see on your on your channel. How can you be what you can't see? Meaningful messages, okay? Um, congratulating conversations, okay? Uh, I see stuff on here where you talk about knowing your worth. Mm -hmm. Let's get into that, brother. Let's yeah. get into that right now. So what let is me tell you. Let me tell you. This, this, this is what the, inter the inspiration behind that video. So okay. many times you get young women who, who wear the most outrageous clothes. Yes. And who, who just assume that that is, oh, that that is acceptable, right? And they were the most, uh, the young man wore some stuff too now. Yeah, they were all the jewelry and all the diamonds they gave you know, that money can buy, but that's not their true self. That's somebody, that's, that, that is a, that is a, a, a mannequin of somebody else. Because when you don't know who you are, you will find somebody else to show you who you are. Right. So yeah. the, if you if you, when you watch that video, I hope you guys do watch the video. When you watch it, the first thing I will say is that young ladies, young mans, you, well, first young ladies, you are so much more than your thighs and your hips and your, and your face and, your, and the way your body is shaped. You are so much more than that. And young man, you are so much more than violence and, 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 and gun violence and, and, and murder. You are so much more than that. God did not create us. To to do to to do those kind of things, you and and it all goes back to when their childhood, when you don't let that that you are valuable, you do things that don't honor you. Cause I mean, let me say this: I have a black man, if a black young boy sees a girl who dresses inappropriately, right, and she just she got the, she always look like she cold. She got tight clothes on all the time. She never wear warm clothes, even if it's a even if it's a cold degree that she still wear hot clothes. Um. And he calls her a, a, a name out of her character. Then yeah. she gets offended, right? Then she gets offended. The problem is, yes, that was wrong that he called you out of your character, but he only called you that because he's seen what your uniform was. He's seen the uniform that you had on. Sometimes we got, see, sometimes we got lawyers and doctors wearing the, wearing the wrong uniform. You know what I'm saying? We got, yes. we got, we got, we got young man who who uh, who are smart and 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 and, and courageous and, and brave, but they got the wrong uniform on. You know, there was a study shown that um, there was a study shown that when you wear um, a, a suit a suit for young man, you when you wear a a, a suit jacket, a, yes. suit, a blazer, more people pay more attention to you than than you are when you're wearing a hoodie. That was study shown. The study shown that that happens. Um, and for women, when women who wear um, just, you know, a pro and I'm not talking about you have to wear a long dress and you have to wear, you know, cover all your, your everything up. What I'm saying is look presentable at all times because you never know what your when your opportunity may come. Yes. So look presentable at all times. And that's just it. Wear the wear the uniform that that fits your character. And the reason why young men and young women don't wear the appropriate attire that goes with them. And, and let me say this too, because I know some of your views may be saying this. It may be saying that I'm not I'm not defined by what I wear. It's not about it's not about what you're defined by. It's about who you think you are, right? Because you are what you wear. The, I don't yeah. care what you say. You are what you wear. You are exactly what you wear. If you wear tight clothes as a as a young lady, then you are whatever you consider as a, as a. If you if you wear if you always have to wear the knot top top name brand clothes, even though you can be broke and you still wear the knot top name brand clothes and you wear jewelry all the time, people are going to assume that you are rich, right? When you're really not. And that's the way society, society accepts those, those girls with those nice figures and those tight clothes all the time, and their breasts pushed up. And society also accepts young men who, who have, who, who wear gold chains all the time and have the gold in their mouth and sag their pants. That's what society accepts. Our society, my society, my young society, right? They don't accept someone like me. They respect me, yes. but if, if they were to hang out with me, 
Some of them wouldn't even do it because it's not it's not because they don't know that they're valuable. OK, let me just say this right now, everybody out there. I need you all to support this brother's channel. Show him some love. I want his numbers to go up. Most definitely share this video in your social media. I want to give a little shout out to folks that I see in the chat room real quick. The young man will be with us for just a short time longer. We got my man CRU. Thank you for being here. We got Sunny Boxing Talk. Hey, Sunny Boxing Talk, talk brother. I thank you for being here. I got to get you on my show so I can interview you. We got real Aaron Collins. We got uh, GG Giggles. We got Bonda Harris, who's been very supportive. We've got uh, my man Art. I should bring Art on to have him talk to you for a moment because Art is a professor. He's a teacher, works with young people. Very inspiring, brother. We've got, uh, let me see who's out there. We've got uh, Sunny Boxing Talk, like I said before. We've got D Boyce out there, Light Breeze, thank, Light Bear. Thank you for being here. We got Anita B. Thank you for being here. We had the Elder Rashawn who came in. We got Reeves Y who came on, who came in. We got the uh, Raw Black Fifty Nine says peace, blessings, and family. We got Anthony Walls, and we have someone who had the uh, uh, No uh, Bully Zone. Is that someone that follows you, brother? No Bully no. Zone. Yes, that that is uh that's another account that I have. I, I'm I'm typing that so I know what it looks like, you know. Okay, let me uh maybe I should subscribe. Oh, maybe I should support. I don't want to use the word subscribe because YouTube has this thing that they're doing where they're trying to spam uh people who use that term that I use. So we say support or give love. So uh let me let me let me click into that right now because I think I thought that was a different person. And uh, so anybody that sees that where he has no bully zone, I'm going to click that and give you support there. So I just did that. No bully zone. And then we got uh, we got Anthony Walls. Thank you for being here. We got the uh, raging woman. Thank you for being here. Uh, we got Brother Hodge. Thank you for being here. Um, let me roll up. There's people that have come in and come out. We got Corey D. D. Black, vegan. Thank you for being here. Taylor Scott came in. We got Little Rock 2517. Thank you for being here. Poetic Celts. Thank you for being here. Um, and we got uh, Vix came in. And I know there's some people at work today. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, people are going to look at this on the repeat. And I'm going to I'm going to viral this video as well further. And we got folks that are listening out there in Spreaker right now listening to this uh platform and i appreciate you all for being here this is the information man show hey everybody make sure you go over and support matthew sanchez support this young brother's channel this young brother is inspirational motivational encouraging loving he is the motivational speaker of the future oh. support this brother this brother will be doing great things and you want to be able to say we knew him when support his channel he is what we speak upon when we talk about supporting our youth matthew sanchez <laughs> His blessings and love. Okay, Brother Matthew Sanchez, let me, as we get ready to put a crescendo on the program, I must go down to here. You had a you have a video, you did a video where you talked about um you will fall at some point mm. in your life. How to how to fall well. Now what do you mean by that, brother? Go right ahead. I was um, I was in an incident where, you know, you, you always know that one person that always thinks that they're right. And you always know that one person that always assumes 
that they um, know everything. Always that one person in your life. We all, we all have been there. And some of us are still there. And um, I was telling him that you will fail. Sometimes people just need to hear it raw up and close and personal. You will fail at some point in your life. And when you do fall, you will blame everybody except yourself, right? And yeah. that is, I think, that is the, that is a remarkable advice that is um, a key to life, for, especially for young people who are scared to fall. Um, it really just stems from understanding that, again, like I was saying, that just because you fall at something does not mean that it's not for you. Or just because you fall at something does not mean that you're wrong. It just means that you need to rethink something. And we don't know everything. So if you think you know everything in this entire world, you don't. You don't know everything in this entire world. Mm -hmm. And that can become a problem when you do think that way. Then you won't get nothing done. Like I said, you won't get anything done. That's where that came from. Really just encouraging a friend. And uh, it really it turned into, see, this YouTube thing, I'm I'm not used to YouTube things. So I started on Facebook. Those of you are, are on Facebook, just look me up. Same name, Matthew Sanchez. Same picture as my um, YouTube picture, profile picture. And I started on Facebook and I did a video. And I did one video about a, a Yama, not Yama Gazan, but uh, Dr. Maya Angelou when she says that there's this African um, 19th century, I'm going to share it real quick if that's okay, um, 19th, 18th century um, song that says, when it looks like the sun isn't going to shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the cloud. But that, that's an old um, 19th century African-American song. And, and she was saying that to say that you should never feel alone in this world. You should never feel alone because even though when it looks like the sun isn't going to shine, it is going to shine. Mm -hmm. It is going to shine. And I also, and she also said, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. So I am every, I mean, I am every young person that wants to change the world. I am every fatherless boy that um, doubted himself at a young age. I mm. and I, I'm every special ed student because I was in special ed from the time I was in um, uh, uh, middle school through high school. So imagine what my my thinking process was like. You get what I'm saying? So L let me say this: This is what the educational system in America uh, attempts to do and has done and continues to do to young black males. They tend, and in a lot of these schools, you tend to have uh, what you would call a lot of female, white female teachers, and they will sometimes paint black young males as hyperactive, out of control, mm -hmm. and they will put us in these special ed educational courses to put us in a tracking system. You're looking at someone that was put in the same situation. And they will try to say that we can't learn, that we can't do anything. I was told by a teacher that I would never go to college, that I would never amount to anything, right? Mm -hmm. and, this, and so this is what happened to you, brother, was not by mistake. Oh, it's I know by, it wasn't. By design, because they have done studies to show that if you have poor schools, poor educational institutions at the high school, junior high school levels, particularly in black communities, and you have poor teachers, then that's a pipeline to the prison industrial complex system. Mm. And you being going get you getting ready to go to you're in you're a junior college and you're going to transfer into a four year school. I went to college and graduated. I have two degrees. We are a living testament that they didn't know what the hell they were talking about, and that the educational system in this society is a is designed in a false way. We have been conditioned to rate people by A, B, and C, by an A and a B and a C, to mm -hmm. rate that is learning. In American society, we have a one system way that we teach. When teaching has many variables to it, some kids are better hands-on, some kids are better with watching and watching while learning. Me and you are a testament that 
their narratives that they tried to put on you were a false narrative. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and you know the problem. This is a problem, information man. This is the problem. The problem is now. I, you know what? I, I I completely understand what you're saying, and I also believe that you are where you are right now in your life because it's ordained and it's necessary that you go through it. Right? When I first got injected to special ed, of course I treat I treated it like it was a punishment, and I treated it like um I was retarded, like I felt retarded, and I felt like I didn't know anything because I had ADHD and I didn't, un, you know, I didn't understand certain things. So they kind of threw me in special ed. And because I had a single mom at home that only could do the best she could do, you know? So I believe that not only did special ed, of course they threw me in there because they, they because first of all, they throw kids in there because they can't handle them sometimes. Some kids, the kids who are really supposed to be in there are not in there, right? The kids who are really supposed to be in special education, and when I, when I mean by supposed to be in there, I mean like some kids need to have a smaller classroom in order to learn. They need that one-on-one -on -one, um, compact in order to learn. So, and, the, and those are the ones who are not in those classes, but the ones they can't handle, the ones that have behavior problems, the ones that they can't control, they throw them in there, right? They throw them in, like you just said, they throw them in that class. And, they, and then they wonder why some of them don't make it out, right? So I would say this. I totally agree with what you're saying. I am who I am today because of me being a special ed, me not having a father, me um, having ADHD, right? Attention deficit, I forgot to say, attention and deficit disorder, something like that. Um, me, being raised, me being raised... Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Me, me being raised as a uh, with a single mother, me being raised by my grandmother and my grandfather, you know, my auntie and uncle. Um, I am who I am today because of that. So, yes, they did. Yes, they probably did throw me in that class and I didn't was supposed to be in there, but it helped me. And they thought they were they thought they were trying to bring me down. But what they did is did me a favor. I'm just saying. And um, oh, that's oh, what oh, they try to. See, and let, let, I'm gonna say this before you. I'm gonna say this, and I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you go. Oh um, no no, go ahead, go ahead. This this is what they do, right? And I seen I seen I seen a, a, a lady talk a young lady talk about this. You got the you got the teachers who are scared of the parents, right? Then you got the school who is scared of the parents. Then you got the school boy who was scared of the parents, right? Then you got the parents who are scared of their children, but nobody's scared of the children, which means if you don't know how to control them, then you are automatically going to throw them somewhere that are not supposed to be, right? So, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. Let me, I just send uh, Brother Art, and Brother Art, if you're out there listening, the reason why I'm bringing you on to say a few words to this young brother because you are a teacher you've been in the, you've been teaching for years you're a professor and i believe when you create panels on youtube it's like a football team you need, you need to draft the players on the football team that fit the scheme of what you're talking about and that's why i want that brother to come on because he fits the scheme of what we're talking about now let me just say this let me just say this to you um you are a living testament. I'm a living testament that they don't know what they're talking about. Yes, correct. You cannot, you, you cannot, uh, you cannot judge someone by S S A T scores. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a reason why. I'll give you a reason why. I went in when I got to San Francisco State University. I went to a program called Summer Bridge. Mm -hmm. It's a program that allows. It looks to focus on uh, blacks, Latinos, people of color, uh, people of different ethnic groups who have the uh, motivation and the, and the ability to, to get into college and do well. When I was in that camp, I was in a, a educate academic camp over the summer prior to going into school. And I proved everything that this, the teachers thought about me from junior high school to high school wrong. They said, I couldn't learn this. I couldn't learn that. Do you know I learned algebra and other types of math within a month's time accelerated? Because when I was in high school, I didn't get the best, I think, education. Okay. Yeah. And uh I played the uh I played the violin since I was about 10 years old. My mom plays. I have family members that are very musical. And when I was in school, they tried to keep me out of my music courses and out of my computers. Cause when I was very young, 
I thought that I was going to be a computer programmer because I was very uh, much a computer, a computer. Uh, what do you call it? A uh, a, a troubleshooter. Mm-hmm. Which when the first Apple computer came out with the floppy disk and all that uh, logos and all that kind of stuff, I was really into programming at a young age. A lot of people don't know this about me. And for whatever reason, I switched in another direction. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Sometimes you take a failure. Or you take people trying to put you in a box of failure and you make something out of it. So just because I come from a single parent background like yourself, just because my father wasn't in my life or this wasn't in my life, it's what you do with what you have. Mm-hmm. You overcome what you don't have. So many of them. I didn't mean to cut you off. Somebody's a Go ahead. Somebody, Les Brown said this. Les Brown's a motivational speaker for those of you who don't know. Oh, Les I love Les Brown. Les Brown said somebody, because Les Brown was uh, um, diagnosed with, uh, with special needs as well. That He was a special need as well. And he also was adopted. Les Brown said somebody's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Let me say it again. Somebody's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes... People just see our scars, but they don't see our wounds. And when you don't see somebody's wounds, you just you try to you try to patch it up with some on some non uh, off name brand uh, medical things, meaning yes. put them in or put them in certain program that they don't, they should not be in, or take away their violin, you know their their really skill. You know, when I was especially, I, I made it. I did. I made a. I did a math test at, on my eighth grade, and um. My godmother, who was my godmother now, who was my teacher in special ed, Shaniki Thornton. Um, I made not only the highest score out of my class, but I made one of the highest scores out of my whole grade, right? Then when I got to high school, my senior year, my graduation, a special ed person like myself, right, spoke yes. at his graduation. Now, mind you, I was not valid Victorian. I was not class president, and I definitely was not um, um, the top student of, of the school. But I, a special ed student now, a special ed student, got to speak at my own high school graduation, and that is, that is the only time that I've ever seen anybody do that, right? Unless you were valid Victorian. And my principal, Dr. Johnny Freeman, who was still principal at um, Spencer High School. He, he, he took 15 minutes out of his speech because he saw potential in me, right? Yes. To, for me to speak at my graduation. That's exactly what I did. And so somebody's opinion of you, I have not only one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, five. I have five proclamations from five different cities here. I have one from Augusta. I have two from Columbus, Georgia. I have one from uh, Warner Robins. So you can't tell so somebody's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Mm-hmm. So, let me make, let me, let me say another quote as we get ready to put a crescendo on the program. Yeah, I, I think a minute. I think Les Brown also said that a negative has ten has has ten times the power over you if you let it than a positive. So for example. A lot of us remember negative things that happened to us when we grew up, right? Mm-hmm. We remember the negative longer than we remember the positive because it exactly. has so much power over us. What are your thoughts about that as we put a conclusion on today's program, brother? Why do I think we focus on negative than we do positive? Yeah, I mean, why, uh, as Les Brown was saying, negatives have 10 times the power over us than the positives that happened to us in our life. We can all remember what happened to us when we were a baby, when yep. we were a kid. Those yep. negatives will stay with us longer than the positives in our life. What is your opinion on that as we conclude the program for today? You know, I think negatives hold us captive. I think that um, uh, negatives can be good for us because it can push us in a sense to want to do more and negatives can be bad for us. Also, negatives can be reminders. There is nothing wrong. If you look at this picture behind me, this picture is a, a three, three African American women praising, mm-hmm. you know, God. And okay. those kind of reminders are important. 
like negatives. Negatives are reminders. Have you ever seen somebody put, um, you know, um, I, I've seen like vision boards. Sometimes they can have the most negative vision boards in the world. Yes. Um, somebody saying, you know, some hateful quote about them. Negative are, are can be good and bad for us. Depends on how you take it. So why do I think negative stick with us most? It's because it hurts more. You know, I have been called retarded before. And I can tell you who's who exactly called me retarded and who they and who they are because, like I said before, people will always forget your name. They will always forget what you look like, but they will never forget how you make them feel, and that can be a negative thing too. So, um, not only are negatives bad for you, but they're good for you. So that's what I believe. I believe the reason why we hold on to them because they hurt, and sometimes they can be motivational for us. Because okay. you can look back on where you used to be at. Okay. Let me just say here right now, everybody, I just put in the in the chat room the brother's uh, channel, support his channel. Go over there and do you know what you have to do. I also have his channel in the description of this video. In the description of this video. Also, brother, you're going to be happy to know that I, um, I use a proper uh, word searching mechanism so this video is going to be right in the motivational speaking in youtube wow. uh, next to the Les browns and those kind of individuals uh through the word search system that i'm using uh too buddy it's a great tool to get you right in the ranking of those uh speeches let me just say this as we get ready to end and i'm gonna as i end this program i'm gonna put the thumbnail back up of you and i'm gonna play some of your uh your uh video about uh self-worth i want people to hear that as as i get ready to conclude this um when you leave but let me just say this i want to thank you first of all for reaching out to me uh, i want to thank you for uh graciously being on with us today um i definitely wish we would have done this maybe on a saturday we, I, I would have like we're gonna get more. We're gonna I'm gonna bring you back, yeah. Because I'm gonna get, I want to get you in a prime time area where we're gonna get a lot of people in here. But this viral, this video is gonna be viral today. I'm gonna do a few. I'm gonna work some tricks and magics with this video to get it further out there. Everybody out there, uh, share this in your individual social medias. Thank you. So I want to thank you, brother. This is what this is what my prediction is for you. And I told you this before we went on. I'm 49 years old. You're you're 21. Uh, my prediction for you is that you're going to be highly successful. Thank you're you. going to be a sought after motivational speaker. Mm. You're going to be on television. You're going to be on, you're going to be on talk circuits. You're going to be well known. People are going to be calling for you. Um, I called and talked to you on the phone today and said, let's get it together. But I believe someday and, <laughs> and don't let this, don't let this make you get a big head brother. But I think someday that when people want to contact you, they're going to have a hard time contacting you because you're going to have a secretary. You're going to have handlers and people are going to be like, uh, welcome to, uh, 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 I like to contact, uh, brother Matthew Sanchez. We want, we want to get him to, to, uh, uh, do some motivational speaking for our company. Well, mm. sir, uh, brother Matthew Sanchez is booked up. The only thing he has open, sir, will be, uh, next year on this date, sir. And, um, but we've been trying to get in contact with him, sir, man, brother Matthews is very, I, I, I predict that you're going to be a sought after individual. You're going to be a highly booked individual. And I want to say that I, I'm glad to have had you here in your humble years. And that, like I said to you earlier, I'm going to be an old man in a barbershop or some coffee shop saying, I interview young brother Matthew Sanchez, and they're gonna say, You lie, you ain't interviewed no Matthew Sanchez. You a goddamn lie. You don't even know that young man. I'm gonna say, Yes, I did. Yes, I did in 2018. I interviewed Doug Sanchez when he was 21 years old. You a lie, Info. Shut up, Info. You lying. I would be some old dude on YouTube, and everybody's gonna be telling me how I lied, right? So, with that said, brother, I like to be funny sometimes. No, I that's fine. I want to thank you. I want to give you a clap. Right now, right here. Hope this sounds good. Information is power. I want to thank you, brother, for being here. 
I want to thank everybody in the, in the chat room for being here. Once again, I'm going to push this video forward through my social media, get it out there, get it out there, uh, uh, send it to other folks in YouTube. I'm going to be talking to folks, as I told you, that I'm connected with on YouTube, big, uh, big YouTube channels, and try to see if we can get you on other people's platforms to continue to spread your message, your ideology, your thoughts, your positiveness. I believe in highlighting the best of our community, and you are what I would call one of our best. Thank, so you. thank you, brother. We're going to do this again. Uh, I will be bringing you on panel. So every now and then, when you get this weird Google Hangout link sent to you, it could be because I'm trying to bring you onto a panel to discuss various issues, and I want to get your point of view. Well, just let me know ahead of time so I can put all these lights up. Because right now I got I got lights, I got a mic up here. Yeah, I just want to be prepared. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> brother? No, no, no. I'll let you know ahead of time. Gotcha. But there's going to be some panels that you're going to be on, and you're going to hear different discussions. And you, I want, I want, I want to bring your point of view to the table. And brother Sanchez, we need to set up a time to get you, the young yeah, lady, got you. on live. I want that exclusively here first. Got you. Got you. I also want to say something to you, uh, yes, information man. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, the quote I said about Maya Angelou, she said, I come as one, but I said, I said a thousand. Yes, I sir. am. The, 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 I, and, I, and I can promise you that I would do everything in my willpower to never give up and to keep pushing this thing and see how far as it go. But I am this. I am. I am you. I am not only you, but I am your father's father. I am everyone that you have ever met. I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. I am you. So you do not give, you don't have the right to give all the credit to me because I am you. I am you in a sense. We all want to feel valuable. So I am you. So don't give me all the credit. I'm you. Brother, you're 21 years old. I'm getting a little emotion. You're saying something that's blowing me away because when I was in college, in my 20s, the most important class that I took was human pig pigmentology, which was the study of black melanin. Dr. Professor mm -hmm. Phil McGee, God bless his soul, was the best instructor professor I had and my as I ended yeah. my my coming out of college, and he told us in a nutshell in that classroom that we have to understand. He said, "If you can figure this out, then there's no need for me to teach you this class." For mm. whatever reason, we couldn't figure it out, and eventually we got the answer. It was very simple. He said, "We are because I am, and I am because we are." So you are me, I am you. And yes. never think that when you leave the earth, your family, your father, we have this term called people dying and passing away and we get sad and think that they're gone. No, they're not gone. They're in our DNA. Your yeah. you're, you're in our DNA, which means they live in us. So we are because I am and I am because we are. That is the most important thing that you could have said today. You said it in a different way, but it's still in the same manner of where I'm coming from, where you're coming from. We are interconnected more than we think we are, folks. Thank Thanks. you, brother. Matthew Sanchez. Thank you, everybody, thank for you. listening. Thank you. Before everybody, thank you, brother. As the brother gets ready to leave, unfortunately, he's got things to do. And, and before you all leave in the chat room, I'm going to play you one of his videos that will be an audio for you to listen to while we get ready to put a crescendo on today's program. So let me get ready to pull this up very quickly. And uh, let me play this, get ready to play it in a moment. And let me hit the, uh, okay. I'm gonna get ready to hit play. Thank you for being here, Brother Sanchez. You, you, you're, you're, you're no, the best. thank you. Thank you, Information Man. You're the best, brother. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
people and even older people. Let me say something, young ladies, you are so much more than your thighs and your hips and your legs and the shape of your body. You are so much more than that. Young man, you are so much more than fighting and gang violence and killing each other. You are so much more than that. Don't you know you got a purpose here? Don't you know we got younger people, young in your age that are looking up to you? Don't you know that? I know that. And no, I'm not better than you. I'm not better than you. I just know, I just understand. You are so much more than what you think you are. You are loved, you are valuable. You can be used to something great in this world, but you have to tap into it. You have to go and get it. You have to brainstorm to see what your purpose is on this earth field because everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. So what you gonna go through middle school and go through elementary, well go through elementary, go through middle school, go through high school and quit? That's your goal, you're gonna quit there? No, why, why not? Why not keep going? Why not keep going? Why not? You got to know that you are so much more than what you appear to be, what you think you are. You don't have to wear the name, top name brand clothes. You don't have to wear them. I promise you, if you hustle enough, you can buy all the clothes you want. But you need to stop trying to show out. If you want attention, talk to somebody. If you want guidance, ask somebody. Go out and ask somebody. Somebody is willing to give you guidance. Somebody cares about you enough to give you guidance. You got to go out and get it. You got to go out and get it. But I promise you it's not going to be handed to you. It's never going to be handed to you. I promise you it's not going to be. Go out and get it. You are so much more than what you think you are. And if you don't think you're something, you're not nothing, you are something. And you will, mark my words, everybody who's watching this video, you will do something big in this world. I believe in you. I really do. I believe in you because I can see it in you. Mm. You will do something great in this world. Yes. You will change this world. Because trust me, I can't do it by myself. Yes, Lord. I can't do it by myself. I'm going to need some help. So go out. And yeah, and let me tell you something else. And, and Oh, yeah, make them listen. Oh, God, please. People who don't want to hang around you, leave them alone. Don't try to fight for them to hang around you. Don't try to buy your friends. Let them, I promise you. If somebody, if it's so easy for somebody to walk out of your life, do not go and chase them. Do not go and chase them. If you have to ask yourself, is this person worthy enough to chase? That's the wrong person to be chasing. If you have to ask yourself that. I promise you, it's going to work out for you. It's going to work out. You just, you are more than what you appear to be. And let no one tell you different. No matter what the circumstance you grew up in, no matter what you have been through, no matter if you had a father in your life or you didn't have a father in your life, if you had a mother in your life or you didn't have a mother in life, I can guarantee you, you will do something big. Mark my words. I'm, I'm, wait, before you click another video, please. Your listeners. <laughs> Everybody there, you are listening to Brother Matthew Sanchez. I want you all to go to, to his channel, support his platform. I believe that this brother will be, uh, a, he's going to be great. We're going to hear about him in the coming years to come as this brother grows and develops and makes his connections in the world. I think we're going to hear about this brother. We may see this brother on TV. We may see this brother uh, uh talking to crowds and keeping the calm in touch okay he's being the captain and the master of his own soul i believe that this brother will do great things 
But this is the thing I want to say to you all. I believe uh, when I did the video on uh, Art Kelly, oh, I had damn near 100 people in here. I had damn near 898, 80, 80 people. It was moving around, okay? Um, I believe that there should be more people. I should have tons of people in my chat, in that chat room, and tons of people listening to something as positive as Brother Matthew Sanchez, okay? Matthew Sanchez. However, I understand sometimes we are attracted to that which is exciting, such as talking about Art Kelly or talking about things that, you know, really are juicy. And uh, but I want to I want to I want everybody that's in the chat room. If you really appreciate what Brother Matthew Sanchez, what Brother Sanchez had to say today. Please. Support his channel, put this in your social media so that this will get this will ring through YouTube. Make sure you hit the likes. I'm going to do what I can to further promote this video because I think it's that important. Okay. Those out there listening and Spreaker, thank you for listening. I, I've got a bunch of people out there that listen on that platform. Um, a lot of people on that platform. This will get out to other platforms within social media, which is a good thing. But I want to thank you for being here, everybody. But I told you in 2019, I'm going to keep pushing the envelope, bringing you solutions. This brother was talking solution talk. We didn't sit up here and just whine and cry about what's wrong with black people. Why can't we get ourselves together? No, we're talking about how you overcome things, how you overcome falling. How do you get people, get people out of your life that is not for you? We're in 2019. If things are not working, change something in your life. You are the change in the mirror that you're looking at. Anything you can achieve, anything that you can believe, you can achieve. It starts with a belief first. Okay. You have to have it start with yourself. Start with yourself. Ask yourself what you can do to make the world better and make yourself better, make your community better. It makes no difference. It makes no time and wasting time to be on YouTube or anything in this world whining and crying about what our problems are. When we know what they are, let's get out there and get the job done. Let's work together. Let's collaborate. Now, my message, I feel, is important. And I think what Brother Sanchez's message was, was very important. But like, I got to call it as I see it. If we were talking some, some nonsense today, I probably would have over 100 people in the chat room or just watching alone. It seems like we are attracted to the negative, but we run from the positive. From time to time. Everybody that's in the chat room, I want to thank you for being here, whether it be real Aaron Collins, whether it be Little Rock 2517, whether it be GG, whether it be BB Scratcher, Life Machine Power out there, uh, anyone that's come in the chat room that's new to the channel, go ahead and support the channel if you're new to the channel. Okay. We got Brother Duvian out there. Uh, Andrew uh, uh, Toppin Jr., if he's out there listening, okay? We got Prophet of Thought series. I got to turn Brother Sanchez on to Brother Prophet of Thought and get him on Prophet of Thought show as well. Uh, O'Shea, Brother Duke Jackson, if you're out there, get this brother on your show. Support this brother. All of you out there listening that are in the chat room that I have not named names, I want to thank you again. We've got, oh, Vonda Harris. Thank you, Vonda Harris. We got Kingdom Crush. Thank you for being here. Jasmine for being here. Anita B for being here. Brandon E. Brandon, thank you for being here. Goodness self, goodness self, godly, godless self. Thank you for being here, for coming through. Real Aaron Collins again. We got the elder who came in earlier today, Brother Elder Rashawn. Thank you for being here. Uh, brother Ken, uh, Karen for being here. Uh, the the guy from Texas, thank you for being here. Um, Kingdom Crush again. I'm rolling up because we got people that came through. We got my man, um, Book of Alpha, Book of Alpha that came through. I want to give him peace and respect. We got Art. We got Sunny Boxing Talk who came through. 
Brother Art came through. KT Vana came through. Kingdom Crush. I'm saying the Kingdom Crush and again. We got the reigning woman who came through as well. Light Bear came through. Uh, reasons why he came through today. Anthony Walls came through today. There are many others. And those of you who listen to this broadcast, thank you for listening to it on a repeat when you do get to it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can never say more. So with that said, I'm going to end the broadcast in the fashion that you know I normally do. And I want to thank you for being here once more. Thank you, folks. This has been a great broadcast today. The info, it's the name of the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the name of the info show. It's the info, it's the name of the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the name of the info show. It's the info, it's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the name of the info show. It's the info. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for being with the pro with, with me, with Brother Sanchez. Uh, you make this, everyone in the chat room, everyone listening, you make this show go. You make this show what it is. I'm going to keep uh, keep bringing you great guests, keep bringing you things that are positive, keep bringing you um, conversations and uh, topics that help to build us up as people. And you know, before I leave, what I always do before I leave, you know my trademark. Here it is. Thank you.